Come on. Hi folks, I'm Seamus from Outdoors Inspiration and this is my German Shepherd, Petra. Today we're on the Staple Tours and uh, we thought we'd have a little bit of a chat about waterproofs. And my musings come with the usual caveat. This is about the things that I do in the places where I go with the stuff that I've got. I'm no technical expert, I'll just share what I do with you. Welcome to Outdoors Inspiration, Outdoor Essentials. People often pose the question, what's the best waterproof textile? And who makes the best waterproofs? So let's start with a technical definition of waterproof. The textile must be waterproof to a hydrostatic head of 1,500 millimetres. In terms of testing, that means that a column of water that's 1.5 metres tall is placed across that garment. And that column of water is an inch square. And the garment, to reach that standard, must not let water pass through. And of course there are more sophisticated ways of measuring it than, uh, than just a column of water. Pressurised water can be applied to the garments. And some manufacturers really go out of their way to exceed that standard. For example, Gore-Tex and Event, their products are up to 30,000 hydrostatic head. That's to say a 30 meter column of water. And that might seem like they've gone way beyond the specification. But when you've got driving rain in a mountain environment or a hill environment or a coastal environment that's really forcing itself against that garment, the dynamic pressure and forces involved are quite considerable. And they recognise that many users of their garments are using other equipment as well. Things like rucksacks. The straps create pressure points. The hip belts create pressure points. That will reduce the capability of the garment. So by overcompensating, it ensures that the wearer stays dry. And of course the garment has to take into account the activities of the user as well. Now I've been a member of a safety team for a regional event here in the southwest for over 12 years now. It's called the 10 Tours, for those of you who uh, haven't heard of it before. It's an event that covers 35, 45 and 55 miles. Uh, for young people of varying ages and they have a wild camp during the event. They train for a considerable period of time and uh, their equipment has to meet a specific standard. And the standard for waterproofs in the Ten Tours event is that it must be robust enough to keep the wearer dry during prolonged periods of rain. And let's be honest, that's pretty subjective. And where you get subjectivity, you get interpretation. And I guess that's key with waterproofs is that it's down to the interpretation of the wearer as to whether it's suitable and sufficient to do the task in hand. So maybe we can answer the question, what's the best waterproof? But we have to do that as individuals. And you won't find a hydrostatic head on products like Paramo, because they work in a different way. You won't find a single wild camping video of me wearing a Paramo garment. And there's a very, very good reason for that, which I'll explain in just a moment. So the testing regime that Paramo uses is different. Their textile operates or works in a different way, but they do comply with a standard, and they do that through the Leeds University Rain Room Test. And that standard subjects the textile to four hours of intensive rain, and obviously has to keep the wearer dry. Happy days, I've got the perfect solution. Why don't we all just wear a polythene bag? That's going to keep me dry. I bought that flask in 1994 and always piping hot, very hot. And right now if I take the lid off it's radiating heat like our bodies would climbing up a big hill. So let's give it a nice waterproof layer 
over the top. And after just about a minute or so, considerable water vapour has built up and created water dampness on the inside of our waterproof garment. And that is pretty wet. So not only do we want the waterproof to be waterproof, we want it to let water back out again. And that's obviously where we need our garments to be breathable. It's just that some are more breathable than others. And we can do that by having a breathable membrane. That is to say a membrane or waterproof material that allows water vapour to go one way, but won't allow water droplets to go the other way. So this is my breathable membrane. And we represent water droplets with these colourful marbles. There's no way that they're going to pass through the membrane. We're watertight. Water vapour droplets, on the other hand, are 20,000 times smaller than a water droplet. And can pass through the membrane. Not all of it passed through, of course. And that will be dependent on the breathability of the textile that your jacket or garment is made from. And that measurement is measured in grams per square metre per 24 hours. Garments made from things like Event or Gore-Tex are said to have a very good breathability rate. Now this jacket is made from Event and it tends to be just a little bit lighter than Gore-Tex. On the other hand, Gore-Tex products tend to be a little bit more robust than Event. Swings and roundabouts. But the more robustness you put in there, the thicker you make the textile, the less breathable it's going to be. And we have to make sure that we clean our waterproof textiles regularly and reproof them as well. So why do we have to reproof a waterproof? So this isn't the actual Event or Gore-Tex textile or breathable membrane textile, whichever pick your choice of the myriad different textiles out there. This is a face fabric that's facing off the breathable membrane. And when it comes to the manufacturer, it should be treated in a way that gives it what they call DWR, Durable Waterproof Repellency. And that means that water hitting the textile will beat up and just run straight off of it. After time, that DWR gets worn away and depleted and needs to be replenished. The DWR not only takes water away from the jacket, but of course it's unclogging the breathability of the jacket. If the jacket is completely wetted out on the face textile, then the breathability isn't going to work and you're going to get wet from the inside out because the water vapour that you're generating from your activities won't be able to leave that environment. So the water has simply beaded away from the textile of the jacket. And at that point, it hasn't even touched the event. It's just touched the face fabric and run away from it. As is the case with all garments, always follow the manufacturer's care instructions when it comes to cleaning. But in the case of breathable waterproof membranes, your jacket as an example, washing detergent powders should be avoided at all costs. They will only serve to break down the DWR and your jacket won't be very effective at all. Now, Paramo garments work in a slightly different way. So they're really dependent on you looking after that DWR. That is to say that you clean it regularly and from time to time you reproof it. But we should be doing that with all of our waterproof textiles, otherwise they're not going to breathe properly. <laughs> and I said that there's a very good reason as to why you'll never see me in one of my wild camping movies wearing a Paramo jacket. And that's because I haven't made a video yet where I'm wearing a Paramo jacket. No other reason. I've been using Paramo products for over 20 years, I think since about 1998. Um, so I feel at least qualified to cast an opinion on their products because over that 22 plus years, I've owned numerous garments by Paramo and I've used them in some quite harsh conditions as well. I've had the Vilay Smock and the Vilay's Adventure, Paramo Alta, the Cascada, the Aspira, the Quito, the Viento, and about 18 months ago I got a Pajaro. Um, looks like a kind of um, 
a real woodsman's jacket. I've, <laughs> I've always wanted one, it's covered in pockets and things. But that's a bit of an issue with waterproofs. The more vents and pockets and seams you put into them, the more opportunity you're going to give water to ingress into your jacket. So I always tend to favour a more simple jacket. Two large map pockets on it, and that's about all I want, really. So there we go. My Paramo Pajaro. Now, I have to say I was quite disappointed when I purchased this. Um, straight from the get-go, and bearing in mind I've had 20 plus years experience of Paramo jackets, lots of their jackets, they've all worked supremely well with one exception and this was a second exception right from the get-go this jacket's DWR just didn't work it started leaching water and uh, I sent it straight back to Paramo and they very kindly reproofed and sent it back to me despite the fact it was brand new uh, I say kindly I mean you expect a 270 pound waterproof jacket not to leak don't you in the clip at the beginning of this video where I'm sat in a waterfall this is the jacket I was wearing and I have to say I remain completely dry well my upper half remained completely dry uh, throughout that process and it wasn't just a straightforward in and out uh, obviously to make the video work <laughs> there were a few dips in and out where I think this jacket let me down initially was the fact that there's a, a seam here for a pull cord and I think that water was ingressing in through the stitching of the seam so the simpler the jacket in my view the better. I'm sure Paramo would disagree and say that uh, no, provided that the jacket's treated properly, it'll work properly, but this was brand new from the store, so um, there wasn't really much excuse. Anyway, look, they've resolved it now, but I did say that there was one other experience with Paramo, uh, and that was the Viento jacket, and the Viento jacket was a venting jacket. It had zips all over it, and I was out in some quite torrential conditions where it did leak. It did seep in through those zips, but there was horrendous wind with that, and it was driving the water through. But having said that, I've had some really good experiences from Paramo products. The Alta jacket, the Viles smock, the Aspira jacket, um, all fantastic products really. And they've kept me dry in some very, very testing conditions. Paramo products are reliant on you looking after that DWR. So we have to make sure that we care for our Paramo jackets in the right way. Technically speaking, I don't think a Paramo jacket has a hydrostatic head. So if you sat down in a puddle of water, you're going to get a wet bottom. So, handy tip number one, don't sit in a puddle of water. Paramo works in an entirely different way to a breathable membrane shell jacket. And the reason why Paramo continues to work even if you're not active is because it relies on this pump liner. The pump liner on a Paramo jacket works in a way that they use the analogy of animal fur to explain. So it actually takes the water and transports it away from your body. You don't have to be hot or warm or active. The textile will take the moisture and move it to the outer side of the textile through capillary action. And with all of these products, whether it be Paramo, Event, Gore-Tex or another uh, proprietary brand of breathable membrane, it's extremely dependent on you wearing the correct sort of base layer to take the moisture away from your body and transport it out to the garment. Ultimately, one of the biggest influencing factors on a waterproof garment has got to be that of cost. And I know it'd be tempting to say, well, I can get Gore-Tex from the army surplus for very little cost at all. But breathable membranes only have so many hours life in them. And you don't know what the history of that garment is. But what I would say about budget brands is give the garment the once over. Look at the quality of the taping on the seams. Look at the stitching. Is the stitching good quality? Does it penetrate the waterproof membrane? And online user reviews are always extremely useful indications. Waterproofs don't have to cost the earth. Just select them wisely. And as always, if you like this video, perhaps you might have a look at uh, some of the other videos that we've produced. And give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'd be really flattered if you wanted to follow our channel. Uh, I'd be very grateful indeed. Uh, I'm going to find a bit of Dartmoor history while I'm out here, so don't go anywhere just yet. All right. So this is what I'm looking for. Effectively, they're, uh, they're little work platforms so that people could work on cobbles and curbstones. And that activity took place right the way up the side of the staple tours in the 19th century. And just putting that into context of our waterproofs and leisure activities, this would have been backbreaking work. And the people working out here worked throughout all of the seasons. 
wind, snow, rain, hail. And all they had for protection was wicker shelters. So they'd stand at their position here and just have a wicker shelter covering the back of them uh, to keep the prevailing conditions off. So I guess that about brings this outdoors inspiration, outdoor essentials to an end. So we'll see you on the next video, folks. Take care of one another. Stay safe out there. Come on then. Onwards and upwards. <laughs>